eyeball in Dallas, Texas. So we are about to do the sightseeing tour for Dallas through Viator. Uh, hopefully we can get in the market. It's not too crazy down there today. Uh, but that'll give you all a chance to take a break for about 20 or 30 minutes, depending on how we're doing on time. Uh, grab yourselves a quick snack, and most importantly, use the restroom. Uh, then after that, uh, we'll head up into uh, Deep Ellum, uh, which is a really neat entertainment district. I'll give you the history of Deep Ellum. We'll head over to East Dallas by the Baylor Medical Center. Uh, we'll take you over to one of my favorite historical districts in Dallas called the Wilson. Uh, it's a 120-year-old time capsule of what the neighborhoods looked like here in Dallas back in the early 20th century. Uh, we'll go by the Arts District. Uh, if y'all are up to the Dallas County Jail, who had fashioned bars of soap to look like guns, broke out of the county jail, made their way to the second floor, where there's more than 200 cameras and reporters from all over the world. They broke out of the county jail, made it into the main lobby of the criminal courts building, and two of them actually escaped. There was a headline in New York that evening on March of 1964 that just simply stated, Oh, Dallas. <laughs> On March 14, 1964, on a Saturday morning, after the jury was sent out to deliberate at 8.30 in the evening, they came back two hours and 19 minutes later with a verdict of guilty. Uh, Judge, you've lost all your peripheral vision because everything you see around you are these prefabricated blocks. You notice that it's open to the sky, that it's not connected, and there's like two individual pieces, and that it's open at the bottom. Philip Johnson when was asked, he said that this memorial it's meant to represent President Kennedy's free spirit. He is no longer bound to this moral coin. When you eventually focus on his name, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, in gold inlay, not only does the light reflect in, it also reflects light back out. And they were charged with doing two things. Uh, the first thing was to see if the natives were friendly. I'm going to go ahead and give you a spoiler alert. They were not. Uh, uh, in order to avoid being seen by the First Nations people, the uh, Texas Rangers stayed in the river bottom where most of all the trees were at. When we get down to Feely Paws, I'll show you an early tree. Sewage went into it uh, with the Fort Worth stockyards and all the meat packing plants were active in the early uh, 1900s. Uh, the people here in Dallas said they could always tell when they were hosting down the meat packing plants because by the time the water reached the banks of Dallas here, it was the floor of the History of mankind spun off in an entirely different direction. Things would never be the same again. So let's get over here and I'll give you the particulars. The Sixth Floor Museum put this plaque up here to give you a map of the plaza. It's got a legend of all the key spots uh, that you need to know about. And I, can, <coughs> and I like to joke with my JFK guests. You know, you see uh, these long windows, that's the seventh floor. Below that you see some arched windows, that's the sixth floor. If you look over the corner, you see a square window where the window sash is open up halfway. That is the location that the Warren Commission told the American public in September of 1964 that Lee Harvey Oswald, acting alone, fired off three shots with a manual bolt-action rifle from that window. That the first shot missed, the second shot hit the president and the governor, and the third shot was the fatal shot. And I'm not kidding you, the economy tanked after the assassination of President Hayes. Nobody wanted to do business. Uh, the Hunt Brothers built a hotel in that tower. Uh, the tower, they wanted a signature piece for the skyline. Uh, it's 560 feet tall. It's got two options. Uh, before we get going on it, uh, I'll explain to you why this was controversial. Now, Texas Longhorns are very much a part of Texas's heritage. Some fun facts about Longhorns. They're not natives in North America. Uh, they were originally brought here by the Spaniards as a reliable food source. Uh, at the end of the Western Bell referred to as Golden Boy. Uh, he's actually a, uh, he's called the spirit of communication. Uh, this golden boy, the spirit of communication, he was at the top of the AT&T building at 85 Broadway in Lower Manhattan. Mm -hmm. uh, and they removed it off the top of the building and brought it here where they relocated their headquarters. And uh, the, uh, the employees at AT&T... Thank you.
is down in Austin, Texas, the state capital. Okay. Uh, but Terry Black's, just like the Pecan Lodge barbecue, they're on the top 50 bar best barbecue okay. restaurants in Texas. Yeah, yeah. That's Texas Monthly. Oh, it all started with this wild. house right here on your left. Uh, this is called the Wilson House. This was built by Frederick Wilson as a wedding present for his wife, Henrietta, in 1898. Together, Frederick and Henrietta built all of the properties in this 22-acre uh, six block neighborhood. This was rental property. This is how they paid off the mortgages for these places and how they made their money. Uh, everything uh, here, 1898, 1910, architecturally it's known as Queen Anne Victorian. Uh, each one of these houses have a porch that goes at least halfway around the house. They're not a full two stories from here to get ideas for restoration, renovation, and period appropriate paint. And if you notice, each one of these houses has three colors. There's a base, a primary, and a trim. And I love it because it's a it's a 120-year-old time capsule of what Dallas' neighborhoods looked like back in the early 20th century. They noticed it created a canyon separating the Arts District from Uptown, so they built a deck park over it. These fountains here, $10 million. They told us it's going to rival the Bellagio in Las Vegas. Jesse Hunt, President. Uh, Highland Park considers themselves to be the Beverly Hills of North Texas. And that's because the guy who designed Beverly Hills, California, designed Highland Park. <laughs> but they also, Armstrong came over here uh, around 1910 and started buying up all this farmland uh, from the Peters Colony grant. And uh, he created a little community, a little development that he called it Highland Park. And one of the things I thought was funny is all the historic photographs in downtown Dallas in the early 20th century. Uh, George Armstrong had these big billboards painted on the side of the building that he proclaimed. It's 10 degrees cooler in Highland Park. Well, for nearly three seasons, they had the Real Housewives of Dallas. And those ladies lived here in Highland Park. Hmm. One of the things that we learned watching that, this was the best place to come see Christmas lights that year. When those <laughs> ladies were flipping over tables and throwing wine in each other's face, arguing over who could find the best lighting designer to <laughs> design their Christmas lights to put on the outside of their house. So this is the hotel where Tina Turner left fight. They got into that fight. In the car, she went up to the hotel, the waiting team fell asleep, and she ran out of there with just $2 in her pocket. Hooey, what's love got to do with it? And look, it still looks good.